I'm Guy Martin, and um, here we are for a, a bit of a lap of the TT. So, here we go, start the first Supersport race, 2010. Right, June 2010, it's going to be Christmas, won't it? So yeah, here we are, um, down Braille, 600. I've only done three laps in practice on this bike, so I'm still sort of feeling my way around the bike, so... Yeah, I've got a bit of an idea. I knew it, from practice that it was um, that she was she was quick, and as you can see, she's not hanging about. So I think just about there we we'll get about top gear. I don't know top gear on these bikes. It's not so fast as so 600. Not the you know, maybe maybe you do 140, 150 mile an hour in a place or two. But here we are down into. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I'm terrible at names, but I think this is. Um, oh yeah, cool. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm going. I'm terrible with names. I'm going to read it off the pub quarter bridge. I said, I said, I read it off, read it off the wall on the pub. The quarter, here we are at Quarter Bridge, going into into Braddon Bridge. So accelerate up here. I think you get up to top end of third gear. I think that's probably 100 odd mile an hour, 120 odd mile an hour maybe. Back to second gear, but this is first lap you see. So I've got new tyres, full tank of petrol. I'll probably just go back down to bottom gear just to get a bit of a bit of a run out here into Union Mill. So here we are, head down, ass up as they say. So everything tucked in. Getting this past Snugborough, just get everything tucked in, ready for this fast kink here at Snugborough. Yeah, the bike revving up there, that's sort of... See, new tyres, new tank of fuel, let's rev the bike out in third there. Back a gear into into Union Mills. Back another gear there, Union Mills, and get on the throttle. There's a bit of a jump just here, see, just just there. Bike just takes off a little bit there. You want to be on the throttle, the bike wants to be driving over there. And um, and that's us. That's us until until Glen Vine. Is it Glen Vine? Yeah. Like I've said before, terrible with names. So, yeah. Head down, ass up. I'd probably try and get my ass on the back of the seat and my elbows tucked inside my knees. Get as tucked in as I can just to try and get the speed because every, every, you know, you're carrying so much, much, so much momentum. Hang on, start again. You're carrying so much momentum around this place. You just need to every little bit makes a difference. You know, like going through a Glenbine there, just back a gear, no brakes, and get straight back on the throttle again. Just, just there, you get top gear. Now here we are. This is probably on a super bike. It is. Not so much on a 600, this is probably one of the toughest corners on the track, Crosby, just here, listen here. That's screaming, I think we looked on the telemetry after there, that's the, in top gear, that's the that's where you get the most revs in top gear, I think we was looking at 16,700 revs we was getting there, so it's not doing the bike any favours at that really, but then if you geared the bike specifically for that corner, then you'd make a bit of a sacrifice everywhere else, like going down now into the Highlander, this is where you're asking for the gearing, and if you geared for back at Crosby there, you'd, you'd be sacrificing this part of the track here, so... That's, depending on the wind, that can be the fastest part of the track there. So here we are in uh, Greber Castle. Back a gear and back another gear. And then Appledean. Now I say it's all about, especially with the 600 around, it's all about carrying momentum. You know, less braking. It's a bit like um, yeah, Appledean. Back a, oh, you'll go back a gear, just drive through here. See, I'm just, first time, but you know, it's a first, I think I've not rode this bike for, I think I rode it one lap in practice on Monday, one lap, or two laps on Wednesday, and then that's this, this what day? What day did I ride that? Was it Monday? Monday. Yeah, Monday. That's yes. Yeah, so I've only done. I've only done three laps. So I'm still getting a bit of a feeling my way around the bike. But yeah, the job's going all right to here, and I'm sort of guessing what to do. And I'm not seeing anyone. I think I'm getting a couple of glimpses up here of Adrian Archibald, just getting an idea of of what I'm doing. And I think you see ten second intervals, and I think I've probably gained. I don't know. You see Archibald just in the distance there. So I probably pulled back half of that. You know, so he's probably got five seconds. So I'm thinking Adrian Archibald's one TT. He's not going bad. There's my uncle Rob there doing my pit ball for me. He obviously doesn't know because the only t the first timing spot isn't until Glen Helen, which is another few miles down here. So he just give me a board there to give me an idea of where he's going to be for when I come round on the second lap. So I'm catching Archibald here, and I'm probably thinking to me, saying, "Yeah, you're not doing so, so bad, Martin. You know, you know. You, sometimes when you can't see the man in front when he's ten seconds, you think, well, yeah, you need to pull your finger out here, and you need to pull your finger out there.' But seeing Archibald, you know, Archibald's, you know, he's flying." And he's, you know, he's been quick all through practice, and he's won TTs a couple of years ago. So I'm pulling him in. I can't be doing bad. So keep it smooth. Concentrate on where I'm going. Get my apex right, and the uh, you know, job should be right. So here we are, Glenmore, Glenmore filling station. I'm not. I don't like this bit here. You see, you see there. It's all resurfaced. There's a bit of tarmac, tire marks there, and that's all from the front pushing. The front pushes over there because the road drops away, and it's just. I had a bit of a moment, I ran over my own foot in practice there, I lost the front and put my foot down and ran over my own foot and that didn't fill me with confidence, so yeah, I got through there with a bit of, um, what's the word, a bit of, I'm not very good with words, I'm not very good with big words, got through with a bit of, um, just holding back a little bit, I want to, you know, I'm not too full of confidence, I've gone back a, a gear to there, that's what we're on, Kate's Cottage here, 
or Sarah's Cottage. I get confused between the two. Really, should carry momentum through there and go through there in second. But say, like I've said before, I'm just getting used to this bike and getting used to where I need to change gears and what have you. And um, and I'm seeing Adrian Archibald in the in the distance. So this is you see, I've just got to get it. You know, I'm sort of thinking, oh, I'm going to catch him. Where am I going to pass him? And then that sort of taking my mind off the job where I need to change gear and I need to do this here and do that there. And I've been catching Archibald and I'm thinking, oh no. But anyway, here we are, cronky body. First one's flat, second one's flat, third one in. So that's the first one flat out. But you see, Adrian maybe isn't taking a flat, so I'm having to sort of judge what he's going to do because you see, we're going at these speeds here, you know, 100, 450, 160 mile an hour. You know, you're using every inch of the road as you can see here, and you've got no room for mistake, have you? So. You know, I need to suss out what he's going to do. So, here going into Anley's. I'm thinking, can I do him on the brakes into here? But he's got good drive out there. And I'm sort of, you know, because I've caught what we sort of seven or eight mile into and I've caught ten seconds on him already. I thought, oh no, you don't, I don't need to be losing time. Now, I don't know where I am in the race. Am I, am I leading it? Am I tenth place? Am I fifth place? I, I don't know. So, I just need to get cracking. I need to, you know, I'm catching out well and he's holding me up here. So, I think, right, top of a gara. Well, I go for a bit there, do I? Yeah. Now you see, that's a bit near. And I'm pro I know probably you boys looking at that, you think, my God, that looked like a near-death experience. But it's not. I can, you know, I'm dead confident to ride as close to, as, as close to Adrian as that. Just, be, you know, because of the, everything that he's done. And I've rode with him. I, I rode racing Ireland with him, you know, doing national road races in Ireland. And I feel dead confident to ride with him. In fact, he lent me an helmet at one of the last races, uh, one of the races last year. So I get on with him and I, I'm dead, I feel dead confident in riding with him. So passed him down into the 13th. There. So now uh, that's, it, that's it. You know, it's probably... Probably lost my mojo a little bit trying to get past Adrian. I'm probably trying to, you know, panicking a bit and lost my flow. So I'm just going to have to, you know, gather me, gather me thoughts again and um, and get cracking and try and smoothen up. Like I say, it's not about how break you can, how late you can break and how soon you can get on the throttle. It's just all about flow and carry momentum, like a downhill mountain bike race. In fact, that's what I was watching. That'd have been. This is races on Monday. On Sunday was the the World Cup in um, in Scotland. I was that excited about that. I think a British lad won it. Giafin. Impressive. I'll show you boys watching motorbikes. You don't really want to know about mountain bikes, do you? But that was a good, it was a good race. Toughest mountain bike race in the world. Well, for, for a downhill race. But anyway, anyway, not one mountain bikes, but motorbikes now. Ren Cullen. This is it. I'm probably just gathering my thoughts again now. This is smoothing the job, smooth the job off a bit. And here we are. Second part of Ren Cullen. First pit board there. See that? He had his hand up, so obviously I'm doing all right. I think that was P1 plus 1.7. So I'm thinking, right, right, I must be doing all right. Even that bit of arch, where I was, you know, that bit of the track where I was trying to get past the Archibald, I haven't lost too much time, so I must be doing all right, you know, I'm obviously leading the race, so everything must be going well, and then it's going through my head, well, who is leading? And I know Butchie was going well in practice, Michael Dunlop was going well in practice, and if Michael Dunlop's going well, he's only 10 seconds behind me, now is he catching me, can he see me, what's he doing? Or is it Bruce Anston? Bruce Anston, he hasn't had such a good time on a super bike or a superstar bike, but on a 600, he's always must on a 600, he was winning, leading the race last year by 10 seconds when he had a bike problem. And um, so I'm thinking, you know, all well, that's going through your head as you're doing this. So um, there we are for Balaf Bridge, back to bottom gear. So, um, you know, you've got to show these things, especially these 600. You know, when I was talking back there at Crosby, them things are revving to 16,000, 16 odd thousand revs. You know, especially that bit at Crosby, there's 16,700 revs. You know, it's not, you know, it's, it's not, oh, you know, it's, it, it won't do that forever. So you've got to show a little bit of mechanical sympathy, especially around the TT. You know, you just can't murder them at every opportunity. You've just got to show them a bit of respect. So. Here we are on the run into Quarry Bends. Now I'm just thinking, what am I looking for? There we are, back in gear. Quarry Bends. Just ease through there, so we're in fifth gear now. Fifth gear, just easing through there. And now, just about there, I can get back on full throttle. And now, same again, head down, ass up, get my elbows inside my knees and get tucked in. This is here, this is here, you know, first lap. And, um, you know, you're not too, you're not really tired. I mean, people have talked about it being. You know, really, really is. And it is. It's a tough spot, but it's not that bad. I mean, I'm sat down here and I'm sort of relaxing. I'm moving my hands about on my handlebars, just trying to, you know, trying to get the blood flowing again. Just, you know, just trying to relax. And you know, because you've got a fairly tough part of the track coming up. You know, got into Solby, which is, you know, from sixth gear down to bottom gear. Then we've got Ginger, um, Ginger Roll, which is a pull on your right hand side just after, just after Solby. But the, but the run all the way from there, all the way into Ramsey. Now that is hard work. See, so I've had it fairly light up to now, really, you know, not too much, but you'll see, just as you go over this hill here, that's, that was Ginger Roll there, just here. Now, now I'm, when I'm going to start with names here, I haven't got a clue. Now, Glenn Tram and rings a bell, but you can see now, you look how much that camera's rattling about. You see, that now I'm having to cling on for dear life. I'm a bit of a passenger down here. 
you know, you're just sort of holding the bike and the bike's handling well and it's going well. So I'm sort of fairly able just to hold it flat out and just hang on for dear life. Because sometimes you get down here, especially a super bike, you know, when it's not quite handling 100%, you just can't hold it flat out through there. You just have to hang on and hope for the best. Whereas a 600 there, I can see, you know, everything's going well. So I'm pretty confident to just hold it flat out and just, and let it move about under you. Um, and, you know, and job should be grand. So yeah, I think Glen Challenge was a bit back there and going through here you see this here you're going through this there and you've always got to be careful this not that there just here on the left that curb jumps out of you there. there's a big k on the tree just to warn you for that curb so always you know you, you, you know we've done i don't know maybe 20 or 30 laps worth of practice before before this race so i've got a good idea of what to what to look for on it and um here we have a schoolhouse corner just there it's a milltown college milltown college i think on the running to ramsey and here we are this is schoolhouse corner the next one there's a bit of a wall on your right hand side there salmon pink I've always said I think I've said this before in another video always break at the salmon pink wall back a gear and chuck it in into Parliament Square and now like we've had a real tough bit of work from um, Ginger Roll all the way into Ramsey that was hard work that was you know and I've got four laps to do on this 600 and um, you've just got to try and pay not pace myself and just you know show, show, show a bit of respect to the bike because it's got to last you know it's got to last four laps and probably what nearly hour and 20 minutes worth of racing so I'll show a bit of respect and, uh, and, and, and get cracking. So, but here we are now. It's, it's a bit of a kind of time for the bike now. We're on the run up to the up, run up through Mayo, up to Ramsey Airpin, back to bottom gear, and then that's the mountain, which is really, I suppose, it's a bit more short circuit. Like, all right, it's open, and you've got, you know, you can see most of the island from up there. But it's um, it's a lot kinder on the bike. Yeah, uh, just going through here into Waterworks. I can just sort of hear what gears I'm changing and what have you. And maybe, I'm thinking for the second race, which is tomorrow, maybe I should show it a bit more respect and maybe not quite rev it as hard. But then I want to win. I mean, I think probably still at this point here I'm leading, or I'm, you know, there's whatever way. I think for the whole race there was nothing in it. I was leading and then I was second, but it was all by a second, plus a second, minus a second. You know, it was such it was a real close race between me and Uchi, as I learnt later on that it was Uchi. In the pit stop, I learnt that it was Ian Hutchinson. Yeah, but he's going well. I think a man needs to stop him, doesn't he? You know, what's he doing? He's won three races this week. I need to put a stop to that tomorrow, I think, don't I? I've got my mate John there. You see that? P1 plus 2. So that's good for me. I'm not doing such a bad job. So from where I had the pit board at Ren Cullen. I never mentioned, did I? The pit board at Ren Cullen with Andy Kershaw. You know the Radio 4 DJ? Hell of a boy he is. Hell of a boy. To learn a thing or two off that man. I think he's just been come back from Cambodia. That's where he has. Interesting bloke anyway. Anyway, pit board. That's my second pit board. That's young John there. Young John at, um, at the Gooseneck. So here we are now, like I said before, head down our up, get tucked in, ready for the run up the mountain. And there we are, the bike's having to work fairly hard up here. All right, it's not bumpy, but it's, it's a lot smoother going on the, on, on the bike. You know, it's not rattling the bike about, it's not rattling everything loose on it. You know, it's, it, the bike's, you know, you can't see, you can't really give it a good impression on the telly there, but it's um, it's a pretty steep. The bike's having to work really hard to pull up here, especially pulling me as well. I mean, I'm not, what would I be? I'm about 10. I've been on a bit of a diet really, but I think oh, what have I got to, what did I get to? I think the start of the start of this year I was about I wasn't I was knocking on twelve stone I think. But now I've got down to ten stone eight, so I'm quite happy with that. And look there, I can see someone else in the in the, in the distance, I think. Yeah. Ten seconds in front of me was Adrian Archibald and ten seconds in front of Archibald was Cameron Donald. A bit of an up and down year for Cameron at the minute. And, you know, he showed he showed his quality last year at the T T, you know, what did he do in the Thursday night of practice he was hundred and thirty one and a half and everyone was just gobsmacked at the speed that he'd gone round and then the next night, the Friday night, um, come off and separated his shoulder and injured a few other bits and bobs. He's never really been on it since with the North West 200, which is another big race before the before the TT. That's um, that's a fortnight before the TT. He didn't quite go there and I just, everyone thought and like I thought, was he just sort of, you know, was he sandbagging? I mean, sand, I don't know, would anyone know what sandbagging means? It's a bit like um, poker face. You know, the North West Tour, it is a big event, but really, all it is is to blow the cobblers out for the TT, you know, the TT being, you know, the pinnacle of road racing, which it is. You know, when was everyone thinking, he was, was he just out there for, um, you know, to blow his cobwebs out and just, you know, sort of um, sandbagging, but we'll see, his TT hasn't quite gone to plan at the moment, everyone was coming to the TT, you know, like I was, whether John McGuinness or Ian Hutchinson was thinking the same, we thought Cameron was going to be the man to catch, but he's just... Not looking like it at the moment. You know, here we are. I've caught, a, yeah, I've caught probably what I'm at, two thirds of the way around the around the course, and I've already caught 20 seconds on. So he's not, he's not on the pace. Well, the Suzuki 600, good bike that it is, probably hasn't quite got the legs on Martin. 
might have some of these. You can see the speed of it, it's not slow at all. Definitely not. So here we are, I've got back to get back to what I was talking about on the track again. So here we are coming up Hillwood's Rise. And this is probably one of my favourite parts of the course. Not this little bit here, I've never quite sussed this job out. Back a gear there, back to here. And I call this bit sort of Hillwood's Rise on the mountain box, I think. But this from this point here to the well, to back to Keppel Gate, I've one of my favourite parts of the course. I mean you can see here, this is the start of the thirty second. You see, the 32nd is three left handers. The first one there, second one there, third one there. And that uh, takes a bit of building up to that, just because it's, it demands 100% commitment to get down there. And into the new windy corner. Well, I say new, I think they resurfaced it about three years ago. And you can see the camera on it there. And um, now on the run into the 33rd. Now, remember, the 32nd is three left handers, and the 33rd is two left handers. You have to get that right. And I'm a bit simple sometimes, I keep forgetting. But anyway, here we go, going into the 33rd. Back a gear, keep it tight to the fence on the right side there, back another gear. And these white lines on the road are really pronounced white lines here. Yeah, they've unsettled the bike one of them, you'll see. You see Cameron just in front there, and I'm trying to suss him out. And this is where Cameron had his moment last year, so am I thinking about this as I'm going up to go on the inside of him there? Ooh, I just didn't make it. Yeah. So I know coming down here, I thought, right, because six hundred are so closely matched, what I'll do on this last little bit of Keppel Gate, I'll just hang back, you see there, let the gap, yeah, and then I'll accelerate before him and accelerate and try and pass him down into into Craig Navarre. A little bit of back brake there, just stop it William. You can see, I've got the drive out there and that's allowed me to pass Cameron down to here. Just do it on the brakes. Jobs are good. Ooh, you see, I went down to bottom gear there and I shouldn't have done really. But I think that was probably, I was probably a bit discombobulated just having to pass Cameron on the inside there, went back to bottom, you know, just lost lost that bit of uh, momentum again and went back to bottom, but I shouldn't have done that. I'll note that for the, for, for the second lap. You can see, going around there in first gear, just losing momentum all the way down into Brandish, I think we'll call it. So this was done, I think, 2007. Brandish. You see, before this used to be back to three gears into a tighter left hand. And now we're going into, you know, from sixth gear down to fifth. And you can see how fast there it was. You just go back a gear, don't touch the brakes, just go back one gear and then accelerate around Brandish down into, down into Wilbur. Back another gear, no brakes, just chuck her in and, and get her out on the throttle. Just careful of that wall there. Don't feel your confidence as you're going in there, you know, that, that wall. Anything goes wrong at all. I'll tell you what I've had there as well. These people taking pictures on there and that big flash, you know, you get like a welder's flash going in there, it sort of takes your attention. And yeah, I've made a mistake or two there, so yeah, I'm never waiting for that every time. But anyway, here we are, going into the signpost corner. You see there, so don't go back to Bob and Bond, just stay in second gear. Rev her up into Bedstead. And that's all right, Bedstead. I have a mate of mine, Yvonne, Yvonne Murphy there, she gives me, because you can sort of lose your way around here, you know, you, I know I'm just on the end of the first lap, but when you go to the second lap, you need to pull in for petrol, you know, pull in the petrol, get your tyres changed, not on the 600, but you know, to get your a fresh visor on, get your, your screen cleaned, and, um, you know, but sometimes you come in on your second lap and you're thinking, now is this my second lap, or is it my third lap, or is it my first lap, you know, you just sort of, you get a bit, you know, all of a dither, you know, you've got so much going on in your head and you sometimes can forget which lap that you're on, so Yvonne there, she just sticks a pit board out when, it, when I'm on the end of the second lap, just to remind me to come in for fuel. But there we are, start and finish again, that didn't take long, did it? Yeah, right, fingers crossed for tomorrow, eh? Yeah, that was the lap of the Super Sport, um, fingers crossed for the weather tomorrow, eh? We'll give it another shot.